Hey there, welcome back to the Cruise Ship Safety and Security Channel. I'm Shelby, Chief Officer Safety, steady hand at the helm, and the woman who's had to explain why the ship's moving like this more times than I've had hot meals. If you've ever stood on a beach or the balcony of a cruise ship and asked, are these waves or is this swell? What's a significant wave height and why does it feel like more? Is it always the wind that causes this madness? Then you're in exactly the right place, because today, we're diving headfirst into the wonderful wobbly world of waves, swell, and how the sea throws a party with wind as the DJ. Oh, and if you love learning about life at sea, weird ocean facts, and how to stay safe when the sea gets silly, hit that subscribe button now and join the crew. We drop new videos every week and trust me, there's a lot more where this came from. All right, let's get into it. Let's clear this up straight away. Waves and swell are not the same thing, but people mix them up all the time. And I get it. They're both lumps of water that go up and down. But the difference? It's all about origin and behavior. Think of waves as short-term, hyper-local. They're created by the wind that's blowing over your head right now. You'll see them chopping and dancing on the surface of the sea, jittery, messy, like espresso-fueled toddlers. Now swell? That's ocean memory. It's smooth, rolling energy that started far away, often thousands of miles off, from a storm or strong winds long since past. It travels in long, even intervals, like deep, slow breathing. So, when you're standing on deck and the sea is rolling but the wind is dead calm, that's swell. If you feel short, sharp jabs of motion, often slapping against the hull, that's local wind-driven waves. And sometimes, the sea gives you both. Because why not? Let's talk about the number one wave maker, wind. Here's how it works. As wind moves across the ocean surface, it transfers energy into the water through friction. That friction causes ripples. Keep the wind going and those ripples become waves. But how big those waves get depends on three factors. Wind speed. Faster wind equals more energy. Duration. Longer blowing equals more buildup. Fetch. The distance the wind travels over uninterrupted water. So imagine this. You've got 40 knot winds blowing for 10 hours over 1,000 miles of ocean. What you get is a massive, well-organized swell train, often referred to as a ground swell, headed for wherever the coastline dares to stand. But here's the twist. Once those waves outrun the storm and start spreading out, they keep going, like oceanic echoes. That's how places with calm skies can still have wild seas. And when new wind piles on top of old swell, you get wave stacking, peaks on peaks, motion sickness in surround sound, which, if you're on a cruise ship, is why you see people staggering down corridors like it's amateur hour at sea. All right, this is where things get juicy. If you've ever looked at a marine forecast and thought, three meters, that's not too bad but then stood on deck thinking, this is the ocean's revenge. You're not crazy. Because when meteorologists talk about significant wave height, or H's, they're using a fancy statistical average. Here's how it works. Out of every 100 waves, they take the highest one third, then average them. That number becomes your significant wave height. So if the sea is giving you waves of two, three, four, five, and six meters, only the tallest third gets counted. That average is what goes into the forecast. It's not the tallest wave, and it's definitely not the smallest. It's what you're most likely to experience and notice, and what your knees will complain about later. But here's the kicker. That big, one-off, rogue wave, it doesn't break the rule. It's part of it. Statistically, a wave twice the significant wave height can and does happen. So, a forecast of 3 meters could mean waves as high as 6 meters, which is a polite way of saying, don't trust the number respect the sea. Let's talk about the show-off, maximum wave height. This is the single largest wave measured during a time window. It could be an outlier, a freak, a moment of chaos, but it happened. And if you're on deck when it hits, trust me, you'll know. Maximum wave height isn't just for scaring passengers, though it's great at that. It's used in ship design, bridge calculations, and route planning. Because even if your average wave is a comfy 2.5 meters, that one 5.5 meter punch can send plates flying and balconies shuddering. Ships are designed with a safety margin, and that margin includes maximum probable wave height based on decades of ocean data. So the next time you feel a huge roll and everyone gasps, just remember, it was probably in the forecast under the fine print. Now here's the secret sauce of sea state, combination conditions. Waves from wind and swell can either work together, creating long, powerful, smooth sea energy, this is the stuff of surfers' dreams and stabilizer engineers' nightmares, or clash at different angles, creating confused seas. This is when the sea feels unpredictable, 
multi-directional, and your body goes, I don't like this anymore. It's like walking on a wobble board while someone throws water balloons at you sideways. Confused seas can happen when a local storm creates fresh wind waves, old swell arrives from another storm far away, they hit at opposing angles, and when that happens, the ship handles it. But passengers? Well, the buffet gets a little quieter. So, next time you hear someone say, it's just a bit of swell, or waves aren't that high, you can smile and think, actually there's a 1 in 10 chance we'll get a monster one right about now. Here's what you remember. Waves are windborne, short-lived and choppy. Swell is ancient, deep and powerful. The memory of past storms. Wind adds fuel to the ocean's fire. Significant wave height is the average of the top third of waves. Maximum wave height is the ocean's way of testing your balance and sense of humor. I'm Shelby, your Chief Officer Safety. If you learned something, had a laugh, or finally understand why you slid across your cabin that one time hit subscribe, tap that like button, and share this with your sea-loving mates. Because on the cruise ship safety and security channel, we don't just float through the facts. We sail right into them. Catch you next swell.